Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can be part of the Shannon's Club, Penright Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm and Duncan Foster Engineering. <laughs> Hey and welcome back to the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. Not possible without the people that advertise within Classic Restos to keep this whole shebang rolling along. Have a look at this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. The 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals is experiencing record number attendance. The cars, the people and the excitement, well, it's never been better. In fact, on last week's show, I got to experience a thrill ride in a 707 horsepower Dodge Hellcat. It was only me and my dry cleaner that actually really knew how I felt afterwards. If you missed it, here it is. And after you've seen that, it's back out onto the show field for some more interviews with classic cars and their temporary custodians. From a Dodge Hellcat ride now straight onto the show field. Wow, that was awesome. And so is this. We have Johnny. How are you doing, Johnny? Very well, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, 1958 Plymouth Belvedere. Now, this represents the forward styling, the forward motion of the car. You've got a, a very big display here. There's a, a lot of numbers here. Your numbers are big this year. Um, it's the first time that I've really formally, I guess, presented the forward look people um, at this level. Now, tell us. What is the purpose of the forward look car back in the 50s? Well, the forward look really is the embodiment of the atomic age. It was the brainchild of Virgil Exner and his design team at Chrysler. And what they did was they took the, uh, just the optimism of the time and literally created machines that reflected that mood. And it was also the age when Mopar really first flexed its muscle with uh, engine setups like the D500 in the Dodge, the uh, Plymouth Fury, the Chrysler 300, and yeah. least, not last but certainly not least, the DeSoto Adventurer. Sure. Now, uh, Hemi, uh, obviously the Hemi was available back in these times, uh, uh, along with the poly engines as well too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's what I have in mind, it's a 318 poly head. Right. Yes. Now, look, they were, these were big in terms of uh, the aesthetics. I mean, they're a big engine. I mean, they're, they're, they look like a big block. I mean, they used to put these things in trucks. Um, uh, before we start getting into the car, how does it drive as a car under the right foot? Is it, uh, is it nice on the throttle? Very nice, very smooth action. The uh, suspension is tremendous. It corners wonderfully. The uh, torsion air ride, as it was known, just handles brilliantly in stop and go and highway traffic. It's yeah. just amazing. There is a video done by James Gregory many years ago. It's worth looking for. It's called I Saw It Happen. It's not on YouTube. It's uh, I think it is available on a VHS, and it'll tell you a lot about the forward look cars. There's more interior. Uh, there's more space between the top of your, your leg to the lower part of the steering wheel as opposed to other models of the same year. It, uh, back Back in 1957, the forward look car, it passed the acceleration test. It passed the braking test up against the other big two. Um, these cars really were, in a lot of ways, John, ahead of their time, of course, apart from their styling. No question. In fact, uh, that was a major ad campaign in 1957, three, four years ahead, or suddenly it's 1960. 
Yes. I love, love the way this guy comes across. He's he's super cool. Now, this particular car, John, what can you tell us about its history? Well, I acquired this car in the late 80s, and it was originally from New Jersey, a car that was a daily driver, at least up until the early 80s. Saw winners, saw salt air down at the Jersey Shore, and uh, it paid a bit of a price, but not as much, not as highly as some other vehicles. But it was a running driving car, and uh, drove it from New Jersey down to Virginia, where I was living at the time, emerging from New Jersey. And over time, my father and I uh, restored it, and many of the parts that you'll see on this car were actually acquired here on the show field at Carlisle. How many years have you been coming here to Carlisle events, John? Believe it or not, this is my 31st year. 1985 was the first. 31 years attendance here at Carlisle events. I mean, what does that say? The enormity, the variance, the, uh, the, the camaraderie that gathers here every year. That's just tremendous. Yes, it's a rally point for us every year. And it's, you know, first and foremost, the cars, but the connection you make with people literally from all over the world, such as yourself. And uh, it's just one big picnic and we just get together, we share everything car related and just have, you know, really a good time. Good on you, Johnny. Well, look, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. And, of course, uh, you being an integral part of Classic Restos on uh, these two huge episodes here, the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. Yes, and I'm just honoured to be part of this. I mean, I've watched your broadcast, and the way you really capture the moment and the feeling, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Good on you. All right, cheers, buddy. Thank you. These forward-look cars certainly were magical cars back in their era. When you come to think of it, these cars were designed and manufactured before they put man on the moon. Space-age styling, rocket inspiration. Certainly the forward-look took the cars into a totally new dimension. And just for the record of interest, too, the forward-look ran from 1955 right through to 1961. You are watching the largest Mopar event on the planet, the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. Back with more right after this. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps. Air compressors and different air tools. Sandblasting cabinets through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts, so when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Of course we have big stuff on the show, but now it's time for something extra big. This is a wagon, the enormity of this car. Welcome Ross, how are you doing? I'm good Fletch, how are you? Good, thank you. We're in building Y here, there's some very special stuff inside Y as every event here at Carlisle. This car Ross, now we're talking 1966, this car is totally 100% original, it's unrestored, you've preserved it beautifully, what can you tell us about the car? The car has an interesting history. It was um, ordered new by the dealership as what they call a demonstrator, so that that would have a number of unusual features that uh, the salespersons could demonstrate to potential buyers. At the end of the model year, it was sold off in their used car lot to um, somebody I think who owned either a shoe store or a florist's, and he brought it back in six months, and a man bought it who owned a muffler shop. and. He bought it as his family hauler, 
and he maintained it lovingly and beautifully until I bought it in 1993, and I've had it ever since. Wow. I mean, to drive it as a car, I mean, it's a dumb question I, when I ask, is it comfortable? Of course we know it's comfortable. It's got to go well as, as well. It's got the 440 up front, right? Yes, the 440 uh, TNT, which stood for Twin Snorkel Air Cleaner and Twin Exhausts and uh, 365 brake horsepower. Wow. Now, the biggest thing about this wagon, pardon the pun, because it's a big thing itself, but it's the lines, it's the style, it's the class. And even looking across the top of the roof turret, Ross, uh, where the luggage rack is, the stainless steel, it's just beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Yes, and, it, and being the Chrysler, um, it has extra trimmings on it, so the certain lines that were otherwise just body lines in the sheet metal are decked out in uh, chrome trimmings uh, which sort of accentuate those lines. Sure. Now we look inside, uh, a lot of black going on. We've got the uh, seats for the kids right through in the back there. The tailgate's down, you've got the, you've got the picnic rug on there. I mean, this is just massive. I mean, that tailgate, you could, you could, uh, you could paint it green and you could play snooker on there. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, also as well, in terms of features of the car, just run through some of the options that this car had in 66. Okay, so this car was optioned first of all with the highest horsepower uh, engine available in the body series. It has dual air conditioning, so there's an air conditioner in the front dashboard plus an air conditioner that hangs from the ceiling for the back passengers. It has um, cruise control or what was known back then as autopilot and it has automatic headlights that would come on when it got dark enough and would you could adjust a delay feature that would keep them on after you would shut the car off for up to a minute and a half and it's got um, an AM FM search tuner radio which uh, may, people don't understand that that was, was big news back then you could press a button on the floor with your foot like the headlight dimmer and it would search for the next available station uh, and it's got uh, tinted glass because of the air conditioning. It's got a, a steering wheel that goes up and down and in and out called tilt and telescoping. That's awesome, Ross. You're here with your wife, Andrea, and yes. it's great to see she's giving you support with this as well. And uh, what a cool car to drive down the road in, huh? It is. It's wonderful. We drove it uh, eight hours to be here at Carlisle with the air conditioning on and yeah. listening to the radio yeah. and air just having a great time. Air conditioning, wow. Some of that right now would be, uh, yes. that, that'd be good. Um, thanks again, Ross. Thank you very much, Fletch. It was a pleasure. Of course, the Mighty Charger came about in 1966. It's the 50th anniversary and it's being celebrated at this year's Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. There's a beautiful example right behind me here and here's Ken, the owner. How you doing, Ken? I'm doing great, Fletch. Thanks. You're more than welcome. Now, in 1966, just over 37,000 chargers were built. 218 were Hemi cars in an automatic, correct? An automatic transmission, that's correct. What can you tell us about this beautiful car? This is a great story. I worked in the dealership in the fall of 1965, and I absolutely fell in love with these cars when they were introduced on January 1st of 1966. I was able to work on this car for the original owner. I was able to work on it. For the second owner also so i've got some good history on the car and that's it's absolutely amazing stuff you know now this is this is just a personal opinion here now the 1968 shape really is uh look it's one of the nicest shaped dodges in fact that charger actually saved dodge they were going through a bit of hard time and the the 68 model did them a lot of favors but when it comes to i guess the elegance uh simplistic lines and total out luxury on the inside I think nothing overshadows the 66 I mean when you look at that console in the center that runs from one uh, the transmission hump right through to the rear of the car the right. four individual seat buckets to me uh, the, and the dashboard as well um, is one of the nicest interiors ever absolutely I would absolutely agree these cars were built to compete with the Ford Thunderbird the Pontiac Grand Prix, the big Oldsmobiles. It was more of a personal luxury car, not necessarily a muscle car. And it's a great road manners. It hugs the road. It drives good. And I got plenty of power to get down the highway. Isn't it a beautiful styled car? I mean, you look at the, uh, the, the turret, how it runs down to the back. Gorgeous right across the rear of the car. Uh, again, it just stands out. I mean, if one of these cars comes towards you, you know exactly what it is. And, and that can be said for so many cars. In fact, I never thought the day would come that a car coming towards me, I wouldn't know 
what it was. And sadly, in 2016, I have to admit that. <laughs> I understand that. But with the hideaway headlights in the front, that's a very unique look. With the full width, wall-to-wall -wall tail light in the back, the car has some definite, very unique styling cues. And I give a lot of credit to the people that started all this way back in 1962 with the design engineer labs at Chrysler. As you said earlier, you worked on this car as a mechanic in the dealership back in 1965, 1966. You would never have thought in your wildest dreams that all these decades later, that this is your car. I know. To be here and to be chosen to represent the first generation Chargers at a show as prestigious as Chrysler's at Carlisle, I have been absolutely out of my mind ecstatic since I got the word in May and I've been cleaning and polishing and detailing on my car so that I can really show everybody how nice these cars are. Believe it or not, the paint job is 26 years old this year, Halloween, and I've almost waxed the shine off of it. Ken, it's a beautiful car, and I want to thank you on the behalf of everybody for bringing it along and uh, making Building T here certainly uh, the attribution of this car, making this display what it is. It's also two hats off as well to Ed Bozeski, the, uh, the events manager here for Chrysler for Carlisle Events. Eddie does a fantastic job. He's a die-hard Mopar guy. He has the passion like all of us do here, and it, it's, it's really amazing to be here this weekend with all these thousands of people and these cars it's just so beautiful um, uh, Fletch it's, it's a, just a pleasure to, to be here with you today thank you Ken likewise it's been a pleasure meeting my up friend. with you take care thank you. you you see how hard my job is you travel from Australia to the United States you meet guys like this uh, and then you go away again and wait another 12 months and, and meet another batch. But these guys here are the sort of people that you could run into in five years from now and you just go straight back to where we were. Absolutely. No question about been a, that. Been a pleasure, Ken. Thank you, Fletch. I hope you're really enjoying the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more in just a moment. There is nothing quite like a Fletch Tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Book a Fletch Tour, it's amazing. We've seen some absolutely amazing cars. What an event. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit Tour. I would make it a point to go to Fletch Tours and come to Detroit. There are five Fletch Tours. Select the one that suits you best. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penrideoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Well, 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 look who I have here, Catherine Buck, Daisy Duke from TV show Dukes of Hazard. How are you, Catherine? Well, Fletch, I'm just great. I'm here at the Carlisle uh, Chrysler Nationals, and there's 700 cars, yeah. uh, all beautiful, all just so sexy, and lots of hard work. And 
and uh, I'm really enjoying myself. How lucky are you being interviewed by Fletch? I know, Fletch. I mean, this is a real honour. Mm. I love it. You, you've waited years for this, haven't you? Uh, yes, and I love the Australian accent yeah. too. <laughs> now, all these years down the track, just tell us as quickly as you can the fun that you had when you were doing the TV series. What was the feeling like? Oh, I don't even... It was my life. For one thing, it was, it was a dream come true. It was so fantastic to work with the greatest... We worked with the greatest stuntmen in the business. We had a lot of Australian... Um, people that did incredible stunts. Really? Yes. So Australians so had a, we had an active role there. Absolutely, absolutely. We had a lot of people from Australia that were uh, just very specialized in certain unbelievable stunts that would scare me. Now, how did it start with you in terms of how were you approached to do the Dukes of Hazard? I mean, we, were oh you doing gosh. you were doing theatre? That that's quite a story. I was not only doing theatre. I had written a one act play that was very well received and I was going on vacation with my husband at the time, David Shaw, one of his friends who was a lawyer who was painting houses because he was trying to get his break as a writer in LA, he said, I want you to go in to Warner Brothers and meet the creator of Dukes of Hazzard. They've been looking for a year for this girl. And a lot of times I bring your name up in this in the show, uh, you know, like what you would do. And I said, what? what? He goes, yeah, that whole country thing that you have going on. So I said, well, sure, uh, I'll go in. And he goes, okay, I got you an appointment. So I was sitting at a restaurant in Beverly Hills, and it was a lot of fun. I was at some nice Italian restaurant, and my girlfriend, who had directed the play, and I were sitting there and enjoying our success of our, the play. And I said, well, what are you going to do after lunch? And let's let's go shopping. I mean, we can window shop in Beverly Hills. There's no price for that, is there? And she's like, Oh gosh, I'd love to, but uh, I, I have to go to my French class. And I said, Oh, well, I said, You can't get out of it. She goes, No. And I said, Well, I'm supposed to go to Warner Brothers to audition for this part, the Daisy Duke. And and then they, she said, Oh. And I said, but I'm not going to go. She goes, why? And I said, because I am never going to get it. I am not Dolly Parton. I don't have blonde hair. I'm not, I mean, I'm not all of those, that what they want. And she goes, who cares? Just go. You never know who you're going to meet on the way in or the way out. Yeah. Just go take a chance. Yeah. And so here's my chance. <laughs> that was my chance. Isn't you, that funny? You took the chance and you became world famous. Isn't that something, Fletch? That's achievement. And I, can, I really appreciate that. Now, Catherine, I'm going to have to let you go. There are so many people waiting for you. I'm feeling bad that I'm taking up your time. But all I can say is it's been an absolute honour to, uh, to interview you on this episode of Classic Restos here at the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. It's been wonderful catching up with you. Great. It's really nice meeting you, Fletch, and I'll see you again. Okay, moving into the rear department now. We have a 1970 Cuda. It's a Hemi car. It's a manual car. It's a convertible car. And we've got Say. How you doing, Say? Oh, I'm fine, Fletch. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, now, you're in Building T for a reason. Can you tell us why? Well, uh, we're part of the Invitational. We have a somewhat unusual car. It's a 70 Hemi Cuda convertible, one of 14 U.S. production, five of which were four speeds. It's an unrestored car. It's uh, not total survivor status, but pretty close. It's a pretty original car. This is what's interesting about the car. We look at the paint. It looks like it's had 10 or 15 coats of paint in its life. Uh, the interior is original. Uh, I guess the, uh, the manual transmission, the A833 gearbox, correct? Correct, and, and that's all numbers matching stuff. It's all the stuff the car was born with. Actually, the paint is original doors and front. It's only the back end that's been sprayed. So it's, uh, like I said, it's a good bit of original, a lot of originality to the car. Now look, uh, these cars at auction, they go for ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, just uh, for the fun of it, what would this car be worth, say? Well, that's a sort of a tough uh, one to answer, but I know a car similar to this crossed the auction block last year for 2.6 plus commission, so uh, it's a fairly valuable piece. You know what, that's, at this point, that's just a little out of my price range, did you know that? <laughs> Isn't it amazing that we've come this far, we have a convertible car, a 426 Hemi, uh, four-speed manual transmission, all matching numbers, and they're retrieving that much money at auction in 2016. It's an incredible thing. Like you say, it has not been molested. It, it is left untouched. Um, that in itself is uh, an incredible score. Uh, it is. I've, I've been a fairly long-term owner. I bought this car in 83 and uh, kind of resisted the urge to have, you know, fully restore it uh, because I think it's 
it's kind of neat to look at an original car and it, I think it's close enough to survivor status to have maintained it that way. There's probably some people that think it should be restored, but... Yeah. Uh, so. A mid-sized car, 425 horsepower, 490 foot-pounds of torque, you know, that's not kidding in a body like this. Well, and it's a super track pack car, 410 rear end, so yeah, it, it gets out of its own way. I mean, it, it does move. <laughs> as, you, as you guys say over here, it drives good down the road. You're correct on that. <laughs> so, thank you very much for sharing this uh, hey, Cuda with you, us. Thank you, Fletch. I have a, really appreciate you stopping by and looking at it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I read about these things in books. I guess we all do. And to turn up and see one like this, you know, you can, you can, you can, touch, you can touch the thing. It's here. It's uh, quite amazing. Well done. Well, thank you, sir. Well, this is the saddest part of the show now because it's the end of six huge episodes comprising the Ford, GM and this year's record-breaking Carlisle Chrysler Nationals. You know, there's just something about a Mopar show. Even the biggest die-hard Ford and Chevy guys seem to dig Mopar. There's a feel of camaraderie and just a feel-good environment embracing four big days here. Again, it's full credit to Chrysler event manager Ed Bezeski and his event team to bring this to us year after year. Well, that brings the 2016 Carlisle Chrysler Nationals to a close, and I hope that you really enjoyed it. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, signing off from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, the United States of America, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can be part of the Shannons Club, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, and Duncan Foster Engineering. <laughs>